Going in depth tonight, investigators have finally broken into the phone of a suspected killer. Zachary Hughes is charged with murder stemming from the October 2021 stabbing death of Christina Parcell. Experts spent nine months making more than 670,000 attempts at guessing Hughes' passcode before hitting on the correct one. Greenville County deputies say Hughes killed Parcell at her home on Cane Bank Drive in, Ju in Greer. Reports say she was stabbed 31 times. And now they're holding Hughes in contempt of court, saying he should have given them the password. And for much more on this case, we now want to bring in criminal justice attorney from Columbia, Lori Murray. So, Lori, thank you as always for joining us. First off, needless to say, authorities getting into this phone, breaking that passcode, this is huge for the case. Oh, it absolutely is huge. And honestly, getting into this phone without his help and without him giving them the password is a huge feat. And uh, we have to be proud of law enforcement for that. What do you think they hope to find in that cell phone? Well, they want the location data. I know that there was a lot of data that they were able to obtain prior to you know, figuring the passcode out, but not specific enough to locate him while his phone was in airplane mode. Uh, so they want a lot more specific geographic information on that. I think that they were waiting for this moment to get inside that cell phone to really move forward because we still don't have a trial date set. He's still just sitting there. And so could we expect basically kind of this rush of information possibly? I think you are going to see a rush of information. Well, at least the defense attorneys are. Uh, this, the download of any electronic device takes a long time. You know, we have these cases with the state grand jury that are you know, child pornography cases, any case like that where they're trying to get into hardware and download it, it takes months to get that discovered back, sometimes even years. So they probably boosted this one ahead of everybody else in line to get it this fast. So yeah, we're gonna see once, now that this, we know that they've gotten into the phone, the defense attorneys are going to be receiving this information. The public obviously will not, but they, they could not provide complete discovery until they were in the phone. So that is has probably been a holdup in this case. And we know that Hughes told him that he had forgotten the passcode. Now they have filed a motion to hold him in contempt of court. And because they were saying with his training, there's no way that he forgot this passcode. Uh, would they be successful in that? And then what would this mean moving forward for people to say that they just forgot the passcode? Well, you know, it's interesting because I'm not really sure of the motivation behind it because he's in jail right now with a no bond and if he is found guilty of the murders, then he'll obviously be sentenced to prison time. But the, this they're asking for a criminal holding of contempt, which requires a period of incarceration. And like I said, he's already there. He's already in jail. But I think it is honestly a publicity move. It is a, hey, we've got you, we let, letting him know that we've gotten into the phone. We don't need your password. And it's letting the public know that they have gotten into the phone. And yeah, there was a lot of stuff about his memory and whether he remembered the password or not. He told him it was a combination of Beethoven's birthday and his birthday. But what they did was really interesting, which was to use the defense's motion for bond saying how smart he was and how he was trying to memorize over 600 pages of sheet music. And they used that um, to get actually to prove that he is smart enough that he was able to remember that password there's no way he would have forgotten if he could remember 600 pages of sheet music and so what do you expect to happen next in, in this case what should we anticipate to now happen following that they've gotten into his phone well the discovery will be provided to the defense attorneys and then i think that's probably going to be the last bit of evidence that they need i think you know forensically they probably processed the crime scene already everything and all the testing has probably been done on that so this is probably the last bit of information that they'll need and hopefully they'll be moving forward with a trial date uh, or a plea date, depending on what information they find on that phone. So that that's your next logical step, but they first have to get through this hearing on the contempt and whether to, the judge has to decide whether to give him a criminal sentence for contempt of court, which is, you know, usually 30 to 60 days makes no difference in this case. Okay, Lori, Lori Murray for us tonight. Lori, thank you. Thank you so much.